Welcome to today's Advictorian webinar, where we will take a look at the new CMS patient health data regulations and to think through an approach that takes you from your current state to compliance and then beyond. We're very glad you could join us in the discussion of what we feel is a very important topic, the liberation of patient health data. We'll be presenting this topic over two sessions. Today's webinar is a high-level overview of the regulations, the timeline, and our presentation of a possible solution path. Our second session on Thursday, June 25th, will be more of a technical deep dive of that approach. So first, let's talk to you a little bit more about the Advictorium HLS team that you'll hear from in our webinars. Eric Phillips is our CIO and an acknowledged expert in the field of data integrations in the healthcare industry. Eric will be delivering our technical deep dive session on Thursday. Erin, as you just heard, is one of our top delivery specialists. She is the Vice President of Health and Life Sciences for Project Delivery here at Ad Victorium. And my name is Mark Kioski, and I head our HLS practice for enterprise solutions for sales and business development. So one of the most debilitating conditions that we've all experienced in the healthcare industry is the fact that the data does not talk to each other. Patient data is locked into multiple silos and it leads to inefficiencies throughout the healthcare system. The primary purpose of the final regulations of the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, is to break down these barriers in order to create more transparency, share knowledge, and ultimately to improve the quality of healthcare delivery. Let's take a look at some of the details of the CMS regulations. This is a high-level overview of the milestones that were included as part of the CMS ONC final rule. The rule was published in May of this year, which officially started the clock for compliance with the regulations. In November, the CMS will start publicly reporting any organizations that are considered to be blocking information. You might notice that Milestone 1, which is the Patient Access and Provider Directory APIs, comes after Milestone 2 on the timeline. This is because the actual compliance date for Milestone 1 is January 1st, 2021, but due to COVID, they've already pushed the enforcement of this milestone back to July. Milestone 1 requires certain parties to expose claims and encounter information via APIs, so patients can access the data via third-party applications of their choice. In addition to that, Milestone 1 also has the goal of making provider directory information publicly available, which will help patients find providers more easily and will also help providers find other providers for better care coordination. The second milestone is the admission discharge transfer event transmission, which requires that providers and hospitals send ADT messages to a defined set of providers related to the patient, such as the primary care provider or the post-acute care service providers. Milestone three is designed to enable core data set information, things like demographics, vitals, notes, goals, medications, and more to be shared amongst payers if a patient switches from one payer to another. The goal of this milestone is to allow the new providers to access information so that they can make better informed decisions for care. Lastly, we have the fourth milestone, which increases the frequency of the exchange of enrollee data for individuals that are duly eligible for Medicare and Medicaid to a daily feed instead of a monthly feed, which will ensure that beneficiaries are getting timely access to the appropriate services. And after we've completed these milestones and patient data is interoperable and accessible, what will be the impact? The impacts will be extraordinary and will create tremendous new opportunities. For providers, the ability to integrate their EHR with all patient touch points will provide a greater visualization of overall health and create greater patient engagement and experience. Payers will now see much greater efficiencies in the reimbursement process that will drive costs down through a greater standardization of coverage for all procedures. There'll be fewer replications of testing and imaging, for example. And ultimately, this will foster a new patient engagement. And finally, we are all patients. We will have a much greater control of our own healthcare life cycle, which will lead to longer and healthier lives and the ability to address all medical issues with clear choices. So let's examine some specific ways that the new state of data interoperability will potentially change the delivery of healthcare. The use case that comes immediately to mind 
There's a fervent search for a cure or proven treatment path for COVID-19. Whether it manifests itself through the development of a vaccine or through a set of therapies that have been properly vetted to limit and control the impact of the virus. The ability to share and learn from the hundreds of thousands of patient cases, information focused on the disease symptoms, severity, effective treatments, and recovery time that have quickly inundated the global health delivery infrastructure will be greatly improved by the connectivity of patient health data. Can you imagine a tablet that a physician can speak to immediately have questions answered about a specific patient case? This is the future that we're moving towards. Let's take a look at another prevalent use case. Before COVID, one of the most significant and widespread healthcare emergencies was, and still is, the opioid epidemic. There are over 10,000 drug treatment centers across the United States, and all of them are wrestling with the same set of questions in regards to determining the best efficacy and treatment programs to prevent recurrences and ensure the long-term health of their patients. The problem is that there is a wealth of information contained in those case histories with no easy way to share the knowledge. After we achieve health data interoperability, physicians and care coordinators will be able to access a greater aggregate of knowledge to prescribe the most effective treatment programs by understanding what works best for that specific patient. We're engaged in a project right now that has this as a goal. Meet Sharon. Sharon works for a large regional healthcare organization with 200 physicians, over 2,500 patients, and they're affiliated with a regional hospital acute care network. Their primary EHR is EPIC, and in the past, physician referral networks and billing coordination have really been their biggest pain points. Sharon was tasked with coordinating the COVID-19 response for her company, and she created organizational teams to manage the acute demands for personal protective equipment and staffing the ER and ICU. She learned how important it was to bring together cross-functional teams to tackle the incredibly difficult conditions that they went through for eight weeks. Sharon has now been assigned to manage the response to the CMS patient health data regulations. Mark, what are some of the potential hurdles that she'll have to negotiate this time? So when we talk to different organizations, these are some of the um, barriers that come up most often. So the first one is avoiding an ad hoc solution approach. Every organization must determine its own solution path to achieve this objective. Simply moving forward with multiple project plans adds complexity and uncertainty that can affect your overall success. This is one reason that we're presenting what we feel is a best of breed solution to achieve compliance. There are other choices. The important consideration is to completely understand the advantages of adopting a proven single source solution. The next major hurdle is failure to align all constituencies. Erin talked a little bit about this in talking about Sharon's organization. Communicating and collaborating with your various constituents and stakeholders is one of the most important reasons to adopt a formal program framework. Understanding their required capabilities and pain points and ensuring your technology decisions are aligned with those objectives is a critical success factor. The next major hurdle that we see is a lack of a concise scope. Most major transformational undertakings on this scale fail not from execution, but from inadequate scope. Project cost overruns and failure to achieve benchmarks usually arise from not having a clear understanding of the level of effort required for each phase. Working within a program with a proven framework and discovery methodology is one way to ensure concise scope. And finally, and probably most importantly, is mitigating security concerns. The first consideration that comes up whenever the subject of liberating patient data is brought, brought up is what about HIPAA? So let's make it clear that the methodology and solution that are prescribed for this program must also ensure the privacy of that data without compromise. This becomes one of the pillars of the strategy that you'll put forward in the execution of this program. So now let's go back to the CMS regulation timelines and talk about a way to develop your own program for compliance and future state capability. This 
Gantt chart depicts the Ad Victorium approach to achieving compliance with the final rule. As you can see, our Health Data Access Program includes a strategy framework and a multi-phased approach with overlapping dependencies. The strategy development phase comes first. Mark's going to tell you a little bit more about this in a moment, but this step is where we will help you follow an organizational process to identify the milestones that affect you and come up with a plan of action. We can help determine not only how you can achieve compliance, but also what you can accomplish after patient health data is interoperable and accessible. We'll work with each customer group from the clinical team to operations to business and finally technology to fully understand requirements and to prepare them to take advantage of the new integrated patient health data status. Once milestones are identified, we recommend a phased approach that aligns completion dates with the regulation enforcement dates. You can see that there are overlapping dependencies here. Due to the urgency of the matter, we'll need to begin discovery for the next milestone during the deployment phase of the previous milestone. This will ensure that we're able to meet the enforcement deadlines while still enabling us to move forward and make progress towards the next deadline. So now let's expand a little bit about developing a strategy for your health data access program. Incorporating a strategy development element to your program allows you to establish an organizational framework that takes into account all of the elements to drive success. Here are some of the larger guiding principles. Number one, this establishes governance. The ability to establish control and set boundaries and gates on how the new capabilities are actualized. Innovation is enabled and demand is managed. We've talked a little bit about alignment, the ability to ensure that all constituencies are in line with the technology execution. And finally, security, which we all understand is about safeguarding patient confidentiality and data integrity. This is a high level view of what you can expect from our strategy uh, development approach. We recommend that you engage with our team to talk about the specific elements that enables these principles. So now that we've established some essential concepts of the program, let's talk about a potential solution that we at Ad Victorium feels perfectly positioned to answer the requirements we've established. So what exactly is an API? An API is an interface to provide a communication and data sharing gateway between consumers and systems and they're recognized as the communication fabric of the cloud. They're used to make data available between various applications and have been established as a requirement by the CMS for achieving compliance with Milestone 1. We would like to introduce MuleSoft as a potential solution because MuleSoft is the number one enterprise integration and API platform in the industry. MuleSoft, potentially in combination with Salesforce Health Cloud, is a best-in-class platform to address these regulations and pull information from many data sources. It offers a complete solution to bring all disparate health data sources together. Using API-led connectivity and the three-tier architecture, you can quickly develop scalable APIs to surface data to the appropriate parties using well-known and supported transport mechanisms, such as REST, HL7, OAuth2, OpenID Connect, et cetera. Also, MuleSoft provides a robust API management solution to handle challenges such as security, governance, monitoring, versioning, and auditing. In our next webinar, we'll dive deeper into the technical solution path for meeting each compliance milestone and give an overview of the top architectural elements like FHIR, OAuth, and the various data elements recommended to achieve interoperability. We will review the high-level technology requirements and concepts, dive into the recommended architecture design, and provide a channel for Q&A to answer any questions you may have about our solution and the Health Data Access Program. Great, Aaron. Thanks very much. Now we come back to Sharon, who has decided to move forward with that Victorium to implement their own health data access program by leveraging the MuleSoft platform. She and her team have gone through strategy development and have organized functional, functional groups to take on the various tasks that have been prescribed. They've also established a value creation office 
to provide a focus on innovation. And they are well on their way to achieving compliance with the CMS regulations and are preparing their organization to take advantage of the new capabilities. Her team and all their constituencies are very excited about the project. What we want to demonstrate here is that this is a very difficult undertaking and there are different solution paths you can follow. We've shown one here that we feel will offer the best chance for success. It's also important to understand that the time to mobilize is now. The objective is clear. Achieve compliance and then prepare for the new possibilities. So let's talk a little bit about your next steps. We hope that this webinar has provided some timely information and has stimulated your thought process on what's possible. We encourage you all to visit the Ad Victorian Focus page on health data interoperability and access and to schedule a 30 minute discussion with your MuleSoft team and the AdVic HLS team to discuss your particular situation and to answer any questions that might have come to mind during this discussion. And do plan on creating your own health data access program. Don't think of this as just a compliance exercise. And best of luck on your journey. Visualize the future state and how your organization can thrive in it. On behalf of Advictorium Solutions and our presenters, thank you and have a great day.